Yo, 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 guys, what is up? Welcome back to another episode of Marijuana SA Weekly. And today we have a very interesting uh, presentation on everything you need to know about cannabis pests. This will be a part one of a two part series because there was just, there's just going to be too much information to absorb in once. So if you're having a problem with cannabis pests in your garden at the moment, you need a little bit of help identifying what pests are ruining your life at the moment. Uh, you've come to the right place. There's going to be a bit of a presentation, uh, some pictures. Uh, but you're just going to have to unfortunately wait till next week for the episode on a little bit more details on how to cure them um, and just some sort of additional techniques like foliar spray techniques and things like that. So uh, you've come to the right place for all tips, cannabis growing. Make sure to like and subscribe. And we are looking forward to today's episode. Dean, you found us a cracker of a of a presentation today. Yeah, this is going to be good. And like, uh, th this brings me back to just sort of a memory of like when I used to marine fish tank and like when you show someone your tank and they don't know anything about tanking, they kind of look at it and they're like, okay, that's pretty cool. But when you, when you understand something, you start to identify things and you see deeper and it's the same in the cannabis garden. You might not even know that you have pests right now because mm. you don't know how to do, you don't know how to identify them. So once you know how to identify them, you might see problems in your garden. And then in the future, it will just make you a better grower to be able to identify telltale signs as to what's happening in, in your cannabis garden. So I think this is going to be a really, really powerful episode. And yeah, I can't wait. We're going to be learning a lot, I, I, I would imagine as well. All right, cool. Yeah, so let's talk IPM insect, how to identify them and see which one are the most common one we can find in the cannabis. Um, so yeah, before we start, I think the most important thing in being proactive with your pest management is, is using your eyes, is actually scouting and looking at your plant, observing them. Um, because that's what's going to indicate to you what insect you may have when, and there, therefore what you want to do to treat it um so yeah being proactive with observing spending time with your plant and not just looking like changing your perspective turning the plant looking under the leaves like digging a little bit in the soil looking what you can find looking what what what, are, what is moving into the soil and um and yeah get a get a good idea because the more time you spend with the plant the more weird insect you will find and even me who's been growing for many many years i still find new things sometimes where i'm a bit surprised so <laughs> yeah keep an eye out and you know scout your plant uh, but yeah let's start with the with some of the most common um best we can find so spider mites mm. spider mites yeah something very 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 common um so they are like like it says spiders um so if you go and count their legs you will find find eight legs um compared to other insects that would have six or uh, other arthropods um so spiders spider mites uh, they're very small and um, you can see on the picture they um a tiny round um body with with about eight legs they're usually red the body is usually red or um so it's likely creamy with two spots on the back um the two spotted spider mites um and yeah those guys will eat your leaf and they'll create uh, visual damage that you can clearly see um, quite easily if you look at your plant um they they like to hang below the leaf surface or under the leaf uh, mm -hmm. sorry not below the leaf surface under the leaf and they especially like warm conditions. So if your tent or the outdoor is very, if it's warm conditions, they'll multiply a lot faster. Mm. Um, so that's one indication. Um, and you can see on the picture, um, on the, on the left hand side, there is a picture of a leaf and you can see the, the damage it creates is very, um, conspicuous spots, like round yeah. little spots, whitish spots. Um, and you can see on the right hand side, there's a comparison of two pictures. They look quite different because they're damages from two different insects. But you can see on the left hand side, it's spider mites, those and tiny right, dots. Thrips. And on the right, it's thrips. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you see, it's a bit, it's not as even and it's silvery and it's more, yeah, it's not really dots, more uneven um, shapes. Yeah, but yeah, I so that's what you'll see. Yeah. 
I always feel the thrips look a bit snotty, nearly kind of on the on the leaf, you know, compared to the spider mites where you can see it's very sort of dotted. So I always ask yeah. clients to say, does it look like a bit snotty on top of the leaf, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. And they leave, they leave larger excrement, like they leave black spots, which is their defecation, a bit larger than, than spider mites as well. So you'll see that with a bit of black spots here and there. Um, yeah, and spider mites, if they get really intense, they obviously they are spiders, so you can see they make a filament, uh, like a, a spider web. Um, mm. They're very thin, but that's also an indication. If you start seeing spider webs joining leaves or, or things like that, then you can, yeah, you can wonder, is it a bigger spider or is it a spider mite? Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's how you'll, you'll find them. Um, and they multiply very fast. They'll a, a heavy infestation will just cover the entire leaf or flower with spiderweb. It's quite quite crazy. Been there. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've seen that too. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's the spider mites. And then for the thrips, uh, you see I've added that same picture again to see the difference um, in a larger one. So thrips are a, a little bit larger than um than the spider mites and they're elongated as you can see um and they fly that's something not many people expect but they do fly so they can mm. spread between plants very very fast um they they also do go into the soil the the lava can go into the soil um so they can also be tricky in that sense but they lay eggs under the leaf surface so if you're if you're trying to eliminate thrips and you eliminate all the living one on the surface and you wait a few days, you might see some more popping because they obviously the eggs are untouched by most like pesticide you would use. Um, and yeah, those guys, you'll see them um, walking on the leaf surface. You often see them walking around on the top. Yeah. Um, and they're creamish uh, or black. Um, also very small, and they make those very obvious markings. Um, you can see there's one here, there's one here. You can see those white little mm. specks mm. there. Um, so those are them. And they'll just eat and nibble and eat your chlorophyll. chlorophyll. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, those are very difficult to um, to, to eradicate because they can move around, fly, and... If you if you have flowers in your garden, this is often where they come from. They love pollen, um, so they you, you can even find them if you go in your in your garden, tap a flower, you'll see them crawl around in there. Um, so also, if you're using cover crop and you have a lot of flowering cover crop, that could be a source um, for them. Um, yeah. The aphids. Everybody has seen and had aphids in their garden. Um, they're really easy to identify those ones. Um, they're very conspicuous in shape. Um, and the damage they make is they're super messy. Like you can see they leave exoskeleton, like a bit of white pieces. They leave excrement. They produce um, sugar as well. Um, so they, they, they'll leave a lot of markings and they're easy to find. Um, but they also do fly uh, eventually they can um they can be winged and then they will spread extremely quickly um like thrips they yeah, these, these yeah. images give me the crawls to look yeah, at yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> 10 out of 10 stress right now <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we should have put a warning at the beginning of the episode i think yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, those are again very very easy to identify, and also they're quite slow moving um, and quite big, so you can often squish them with your hands when you're going through your garden if you see I think them. Also, some people maybe that don't really know much pest, but I mean this is a heavy infestation. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, like this this is this is probably when it's like at, like don't even phone us when it's at this point. <laughs> 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 like it's, oh gosh yeah yeah like this would be like That's a wild cool. plant outdoors like you know you've like kind of just stumbled upon it uh you know i don't think it uh a lot of our indoor growers would let it get this bad hopefully 
Oh, stressful. Yeah, that's yeah. For it to get this bad in an indoor grow, you have to really be blind or not pay much attention. Yeah, <laughs> or have a very hidden spot in the garden that you just can't mm. access. Or yeah. and the aphids yeah. are also they often found like on the stem as well. They they like latch onto the stem. Uh, yeah, they'll not- they'll they they basically suck the sap. So you'll find them on on the around the veins, trying to mm. bite into the into the veins and and suck whatever they can. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Um, and and due to their to the damage, uh, because it's so obvious and messy, that will often introduce um, more pathogen like your mildews and your bud rot because of that sugary soup substance they create and leave behind. Um, so yeah, the infestation has consequences if it's left unchecked. Um, it will attract more pests um, mm. and pathogens. But at the same time, it will also attract beneficial insects if they if they have access because. So it's a feast. It's a big buffet for them. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and yeah, they suck the sap. So, and as you can see, the large number will definitely hurt your plant. You know, a few thrips here and there is not mm. a massive issue, but aphids they 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 often in large numbers um, and in in one specific area, and they will they will decimate your plant and suck all its energy out. So you will lose a lot of potential yield mm. um and the thing is the aphids are not just on the above growth that those are the easy aphids then you have the 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 level hard aphids those are the one that the root aphids that are below ground and directly latch onto your root and suck the nutrients straight from there and those are a lot diff- more difficult to identify well identify not but find because they're hidden um, mm. and you don't often go dig into your soil and yeah, that yeah, looks like some rock wall there. So it's like you wouldn't see that usually uh, past a certain point. Uh, once it goes into a medium, you would, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, it's the tip of the iceberg, probably. Um, so, so yeah, those are the same idea as the as the aphids on the above um, above the soil growth. Um, they just suck directly off the root, and you can see they're usually a lot darker in color. They have this. Uh, this black reddish coloration to them um and you'll if they if it's a heavy infestation you'll often find them uh, crawling up your stem or even the side of your pots um and that's a, often a good indication that you you may have uh, root aphids is it the case so that's like, what i was saying is it is it yep. the case if you see like one or two there could be like a hundred that you don't see usually yeah yeah, yeah 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 more often than not you'll yeah yeah exactly because <laughs> that's the one that are trying to wander and see if they yeah. can find other but in the soil there's already a lot that are eating mating and, uh, oh, no no <laughs> and yeah uh, i was gonna say this is why you want to dig into your soil whether you're in the living soil or cocoa or whatever just look into your soil and see what is happening there because there is also pests um down there in the soil beneficials and- too Generally but, deep, uh, or or would you find them quite close to the surface? You'll find them pretty close All to over. the surface, um, especially with cannabis, which sends a lot of feeder roots in the top section of the of the soil. So they will they will latch on to to those because they're fresh roots and uh, grabbing a lot of nutrients. Um, but you'll find them, yeah, throughout. Um, yeah. And they're and they're difficult to to squish like the one on your leaf. You know you can if you if you want you could just remove them by hands. But when it's on yes. your roots, that's very difficult. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And uh, last but not least, the fungus net. Fungus net. Oof, this one everybody has it in the soil, especially in in unhealthy soil or cocoa, and they're very attracted to moisture. So. If you have a heavy hand on on watering, you you're bound to have an encounter with fungus gnats. And what they do is they lay eggs in the in the medium, um, and they they hatch into this sort of lava maggoty looking thing. It's a bit translucent, and it usually has a black head. So you can often find it if you dig into your soil and you see worm like. Um, larvae moving around with a black head then you 
you most you most likely have a fungus net issue <laughs> it looks alien nearly i mean like the zoomed up image yeah. of, the, of the fungus net lava looks like some sort of alien versus predator thing <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah you can see everything you can see through it you can see inside its stomach what it's eaten it's beautiful <laughs> yeah and then eventually they grow up into adults which have again wings and then can fly and will colonize all your parts and all your medium if you left leave them unchecked um, yeah that's why it's good to have a sticky trap in your in your, or some kind of sticky item in your grow because they often get, yes if you do have them you've when you put up a sticky trap you'll nearly instantaneously start to see start to see fungus gnats i, I personally uh, dealt with quite a big fungus gnat infestation quite recently still got a successful crop but uh, uh i put out a sticky trap and in in a day it was like gone from yellow to black basically <laughs> there you go yeah 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 and and you'll catch anything else like for example i just put a i stuck a picture of an aphid just there to show a bit of a comparison you can see this one looks the one on the right looks a bit different than the one on the left uh, the left yes. one is the fungus gnat, and the right one is the aphid with wing, which are often confused. And like you're saying, you will catch both of them on your on your sticky trap. Um, but to differentiate them, just quickly, you can look at the at the way it's holding its wings um, and the abdomen as well. You see the the abdomen is not fused with the body here, whereas uh, on the aphid it is fused. It's one big unit. Yes. Um, but again, those are the the one you want to catch and and look out for on your sticky traps to, to make sure they don't grow in in big numbers exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm. All right. But they are very dependent on water, so that's a, that's often a big cause. Uh, we we most definitely should have had a uh trigger warning at the beginning of this episode <laughs> <I thought so. laughs> sorry guys this is like stressed everyone out i know those watching are more stressed than those listening if you're listening thank whoever you want to thank for that <laughs> there, there's some some gnarly pictures up on up on the screen um but yeah this yeah. is like super important it's 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 if you get pests it's not too late we're going to go deep into the remedies for all of these guys next week uh, that means, you know, getting rid of, uh, you know, prevention as well. We'll touch on that sort of the techniques there's, it, you know, it doesn't always mean you have to go and get like the like super potent pesticide to get rid of them. A lot of these are quite easy to get rid of and to manage once, once they're there, but you just have to sort of be consistent. And there's a, there's a lot of easy tips on that. Uh, even Mike, this, even gonna, this is fixable and savable. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know? Uh, Mike, we're gonna we're gonna let you go, and then we are going to very much look forward to next week, uh, guys. Obviously, all the the details are below to get hold of Mike if you can't wait for next week. Uh, he has an amazing line of products uh, that are sort of uh, uh, aimed at these kind of things and much uh, much more. So you can also check out his website below. But yeah, thanks so much, Mike. We'll we'll see you next week. Thanks, Mike. For sure. Have a good one. Cheers. Like I said at the start, you know, like you... Like a somber episode. It, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just sat there like... I think at points I like looked in the camera and my mouth was hanging open. So yeah, sorry sick. about that, guys. I wasn't <laughs> trying to catch the gnats. I was just... <laughs> <laughs> I saw some like sweat coming off the and I was like, yeah, no. I was like, like no, because I was... Envisioning his worst nightmares. <laughs> I was uh, looking at those root aphids and I made a batch of clones recently and I, I was like, why are these clones struggling so much? Mm. And I lifted up the started really inspecting the jiffy pellets closely and there was this, just this massive infection of root aphids and it was like oh. many ticks on my yeah, roots yeah, yeah. and i'm like you know i was like oh my Blood fuck and, <laughs> <laughs> and it was i actually had to go and identify because in my whole grow career it was the first time that i've ever seen them but i don't think it would have been the first time i've identified because i'm mm. not often digging around in the soil inspecting for pests you know yeah. even as a relatively experienced grower so yeah, there's always new things. I mean, even Mike, who's got even more, more knowledge yeah, about yeah, the beneficials. Still figuring and things not, out. Still figuring out the, 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 some new guys. So, yeah, like the, the identification is highly important. And I think, mm. yeah, I think this is one of the best episodes we've done in a while, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's important. <laughs> and Mike did all and, the work. <laughs> yeah, it's important. And, and we need to touch on these things because it's, you know, it's a very difficult thing. But it's like, you know, there is a set view and just learn those. And then you're sort of, it's like sort of knowing your nutrient imbalances 
uh, identifying like sort of different, uh, the way the leaves look and like sort of what nutrient in, uh, uh, sufficient insufficiencies they've got, uh, deficiencies they've got on it and, and et cetera. But anyway, guys, we've way over time. Uh, thank you everyone for, for your time, uh, today and for listening and sharing with your friends. Uh, obviously YouTube doesn't give us a sense so of any support on the grow stores. Welcome and sharing this to your friends. It helps us grow as a channel and helps us keep doing these things and bringing you more content. And as always, uh, till next time, peace.